Hey, Surly, isn't this buffet wonderful? Oh my god, I can't believe we haven't been here before. And guys, as always, before we start this video, if you will like and subscribe right down there, that really helps us grow the channel and hopefully get some more sponsorships and other parts that we can put on the car that we can give you guys some reliable information on. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, everybody. So we're here. We're going to install this harmonic balancer. Is that what it's called? Or is it called a lightweight crankshaft pulley? There's many names for these things, uh, but we got an aluminum one from Unorthodox Racing that we unboxed, and you guys can always go back and check out that video, just take a look at what it looks like. Uh, but today we're going to try to install this thing. So I went to AutoZone and I bought some tools that we're going to need, and I'll show you those. And then there's our pulley in the box there. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get down to this thing, which I don't know if you can see it from here. It's right there. So we're going to have to take off this intake tube and we should have direct access right to it right there. I've got to stop us right there on this install video. I had some problems. Uh, one, I didn't have the right size socket to begin with. I had to go out and buy new sockets. Two, I bought an impact. It wasn't strong enough. I went and bought a 1200 pound impact. That didn't work. I used heat. That didn't work. I used like this ratchet strap thing that ratchet straps around the pulley to hold it in place. And then we tried to use a pry bar. That didn't work. It just kept on turning. So I had to send it to the pros. I sent it to Greg's Automotive and they got it installed for me. So here we go. All right, guys, we just got this aluminum pulley installed and it looks like we're at 86, 808 are the miles on the odometer. So they said to run this thing for about a week and uh, then take it to the dyno and get a dyno. So yeah, we'll run it for a week. I do lift and Uber too, so I'll be running it most more than most. So we should get some actual dyno number results here. I'll schedule that tonight and get it going. Go! Cool. Zero to 60 timer. Zero to 60 pull number two. bunch of miles on this pulley uh, not exactly sure how many miles but I'll figure that out for us and uh, I've definitely got some interesting things going on uh, you know off the takeoff you really can't tell a big difference from the you know stopping to getting going uh, but but there is a but I do notice a pretty noticeable difference uh, in that 2,000 rpm range to like the 5400 range like if I'm already going and I hit on the gas, then I actually feel it go a little bit better. You know, the easiest way for me to explain it. 
So yeah, I do think it did something. I'm not sure how much horsepower it added. I can definitely feel it. I enjoy it. The car's more fun to drive. Uh, I'll tell you that for sure. When I'm pulling out of stoplights and cutting around people, it does it with more ease. So I believe it did something. I don't know. Ryan and Kelsey are going to give you their expert opinion. And then uh, we'll put it on the dyno here and find out what it really did. So talk to you soon. Our approximate mileage, 88,336. Uh, after we run the car for a little bit. And let's take a look here. Take a look at this gas mileage that we reset. I think we were at 19.1. Let's take a look. 18.3. Who knows? Ghost is back for dyno poles. This time with an unorthodox racing crank pole. Nicely machined piece. It is not an underdrive pulley, so it does not spin any of the accessories any slower or faster. It is just a lighter weight pulley. And the intention behind this is that if you have less rotational mass or a different moment of inertia, it's gonna be easier for the motor to spin the pulley and it's not gonna have as much parasitic loss. I don't personally anticipate to see any huge gains with these. We've tested underdrive pulleys before and hadn't shown any appreciable increase in horsepower. The fact is, even though you've got a nice heavy five pound piece of metal spinning on the front of your motor, it doesn't take all that much power to spin that to start with, so by adding in a lighter pulley, you're not really taking very much load off of the motor. This is a pulley that we could spin to an appreciable speed by hand realistically. So I don't I don't necessarily think we're going to gain anything, but you know we want to test. It's a nice piece. I'm not trying to talk down on the product by any means, but I don't think the gains are going to be there. Well, theoretically speaking, this lighter balancer should free up some power since the motor doesn't have to waste horsepower turning it. It, it defeats the purpose of having the harmonic dampener there to start with. The OEMs who designed this motor realized there were going to be some vibrational forces in the block and rotating assembly while it spins, and they used mathematical formulas to come up with the right size and right weight of balancer to put on this motor to make it last as long as it can. So by changing this out, we're kind of undoing their work a little bit. That's one of the reasons I don't suggest these modifications. You really want some mass up front. And even in supercharged applications, sometimes it's advantageous to add a heavier balancer to keep some of the resonant frequencies from the belt from transferring into the crank. Ghost is back for more dyno poles, this time with an unorthodox racing lightweight crank pulley. We have our last run from when we tuned the vehicle last time it was here. And we're going to slowly overlay one run after another and analyze the data that we see and kind of decide if we think the car made gains or not with this modification. So red and blue, this is the stock run. I'm actually going to make this red and red, make it a little easier to see against the other runs. The first dyna run that we made laid almost right on top of the original pole from when the vehicle was here last. All of these poles are weather corrected, so we don't have any temperature differences, humidity differences, or pressure differences affecting that. We actually have a weather sta station in our dyno, so that really helps keep everything consistent and make this an accurate test. The second run, we did see a little bit of additional measured power up top. I'm going to come back to this in a second because I think this is actually more of an outlier just based on how the car loaded and unloaded on the dyno. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to look at the very first pull with the vehicle stock compared to the third pull. Again, we see the dyno plots lay right on top of each other and the car make exactly the same amount of power. What I want you to notice is there is some oscillation in the poles. We see the numbers are higher and then lower and then higher and then lower and then honestly right on top of each other. We're going to see that again when we switch over to the second run where I believe we have an outlier in the data. What happens when a car 
applies torque against the straps, sometimes that forwards and backwards force is carried for a couple of iterations as the car is accelerating, and that's recorded as a torque gain or a torque loss depending on which way the straps are pulling the car. So since some of that torque is transferred to the rollers, you have to kind of analyze the data as a whole as opposed to just looking at the peak numbers and deciding on that. So I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to turn the second pole on where we actually saw some gains. So notice our oscillation high, low, high, low, high. This would be the low point, which would make this a high point. I think we just had a little bit of oscillation on the straps because if we turn off this one run and we turn on the other two runs, everything lays perfectly on top of each other. We're not seeing an 11 horsepower gain. We're not seeing more power as the RPMs increase. It, it's, it's just not there. So here's everything laid on top of each other. Make your own assumptions as to whether you think that's added power. Closing arguments. I haven't even seen OnKill's video, but I'll tell you how I feel about the pulley right off the bat. So I was really, really hoping for that 9 horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but I was really hoping for it. So to say I'm not disappointed is would be a lie. I'm super disappointed. Uh, we did not get the results that we were wanting. But what I will say is the placebo effect is real with this thing. Uh, I honestly feel like I pull off faster. I feel like will not pull off faster when I'm already at a go because pull off faster like from a stop to a start or start a stop to a start yeah whatever that is not any better but what I do feel is better is like when I'm hitting on the gas from already a go I feel like I got a quicker response time at that point uh, but again a little bit disappointed we didn't get any horsepower gains out of this um, but that's what it goes man this is a testing phase to see how this thing works and uh, we got a pretty reliable test. There were some variables that weren't the same, but I think we did all right. Thanks, Unorthodox Racing. Thanks, V6 Pentastar Performance. Brian Scott, you guys have all been awesome. On Kill Tuning, once again, you guys are amazing. Appreciate you guys, too. Till the next part, we put on the car and we test.